right, well, welcome everybody. Hope you've had a, a good week. It may have been challenging, but that's why we're here, to be encouraged and strengthened today. Let me share some uh, announcements from our bulletin today. Uh, following our service today will be our uh, church luncheon, so you're invited all to remain for that and have a wonderful lunch and great, great fellowship. So if you can make that, uh, stay today for lunch after our service this morning. Again, we want to praise the Lord that our electrical is up and running and running smoothly. Amen to that. As you know, it's much cooler in here than it is out there. So, all right. Um, next, don't forget, uh, if you can assist with some uh, various items for the Hope Center, um, appreciate that. The box is in the foyer. And uh, don't, uh, just remember, um, and this is something that I've mentioned before, but it's been a little while. Um, sometimes what churches will do, and this is unintentional, okay, I don't think they, they planned this, but sometimes churches, what they'll do is when they think of missions, okay, in their mind, when they think of missions, they think missions means a foreign country. That is true. Missions does mean foreign country, but, but, and that's what I've tried to emphasize here, missions also means right where we are here. It means both, that we have a mission field here in our community and also elsewhere. And so the Hope Center is one of the missions that uh, we support here in our town. Uh, let's see. Oh, I want to re uh, remind us, uh, don't forget to pray for our nation on September 11th. Don't forget to pray for the nation on that day. Now, of course, we can pray for the nation any day, but as you know, September 11th is a very significant date for our country. And let's see. One more thing I'll mention. Miss Rose just mentioned to me that she's been playing 70 years. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we are blessed by her playing for us. Amen. All right. I think that's all by announcement. Anything I've missed? Anybody needs to mention? We're good? Okay. Let's turn to 217. Number 217 this morning. for today is from the book of Habakkuk. You may, you may be thinking, Habakkuk? What? What's that? Uh, Habakkuk is one of the uh, books in the scripture. It is. 
And uh, Habakkuk, of course, is the place in the Bible where your pages are all stuck together. You haven't been there for a while. <laughs> Habakkuk is between, in between Zephaniah and Micah. On oh, oh, Nahum, Nahum, sorry. <clears throat> so it's Habakkuk chapter 3 and verses 17, 18, and 19. So Habakkuk chapter 3, starting at verse 17. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high hills. To the chief musician with the stringed instruments. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy scriptures. As you know, there's different segments I like to do in our service. Sometimes it's a missions moment. Sometimes it's uh, uh, testimonies of praise and prayer. Uh, some, uh, as you know, it's uh, communion as well. Various things. One of the things I wanted to say today or share with you is how to pray for America. And let's see. Um, let me start going to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7, and you can follow as I read these verses. Second Chronicles 7, starting at verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I covenanted with David your father, saying you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them from my land, which I have given them. In this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done this, done thus to this land and this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt, and embraced other gods, worshipped them, and served them. Therefore he has brought all this calamity on them. We're most familiar with the verse that says Second Chronicles 7, 14. That's the verse we're most familiar with, but we read the whole passage because you see what God says. It's about keeping his statutes, keeping his commands. How should we pray for America? 
And then I want to share something else. We need to pray for mercy. That's for starters. We need to pray for the mercy of God to come upon our land and to extend his mercy to us. We don't need, we don't need to go into all the reasons why. You know them as well as I do. A second thing we need to pray for is the moving of the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Spirit of God will open hearts and open minds to bring conviction and righteousness and truth. By the way, uh, if you want to look at that up further, um, that's John, let's see, I believe that's John 17, I believe, where he says about the Spirit to bring righteousness and conviction. A third thing we can pray for is this, pray for the realization of our condition. As you know, um, different uh, programs like AA, NA, and so forth, it's always been said that there's no help for the person until they finally admit they have a problem. And so similarly here, even spiritually, there needs to be a realization of the condition. And then the fourth thing we can pray for in relation to our nation, a revealing of truth. I don't know if you've noticed, but there is a huge, huge distortion of the truth. Have you noticed that? In all areas of life, a huge distortion of the truth. We need to pray for revealing of the truth. Let me share this with you. I believe this was a prayer, and it goes like this. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. Their road will be long and hard, for the enemy is strong. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. We know by thy grace, by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. With thy blessing, we shall prevail over the unholy forces of our enemy. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogancies. Lead us to the saving of our country and with our sister nations into a world unity that will spell us sure peace, a peace invulnerable to the schemings of unworthy men, and a peace that will let all of men live in freedom, reaping the just rewards of their honest toil. That prayer was in 1944. Franklin Roosevelt. Let us pray for our, let us take a moment and pray for our nation. Our gracious Heavenly Father, God of all grace and mercy, we praise you this day that you have allowed us the freedom to be in this nation, to be in this state, to be in this town, and in this place. We praise you for your goodness and grace, how you have blessed this nation. But Father, our hearts, our minds, are heavy because we know that this nation has turned its back on the Lord God of your holy word. We pray today, Lord, for mercy. You may extend mercy to this nation. And Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to have hearts and minds that are open to your truth. The Lord, you may, be have, you may have an opportunity to work in spectacular ways to be leading people back to yourself. As we will see today in our message, I pray, Lord, you will strengthen us. You will strengthen this congregation to be a people of faith, to be a people of holiness, to be a people of righteousness, 
You will strengthen our hearts and minds and spirit to stand for truth, to stand for we know what is right, and Lord, to proclaim that you are the most high and almighty God over all things, all peoples, all nations, the entire earth, and we give you praise and thanks. Uphold us now, I pray. May you give us the boldness and the courage we will need. And may we be willing to also lead others in prayer to seek the things of God. And Father, may we, as we do this work for you, be looking as well for your return. May we be faithful, even more faithful, as we look to your return. We praise you now for this tremendous opportunity you've given us, not only this day, but in the days ahead, to continue to pray for one another, pray for those in our community, and pray for our nation. May you extend your mercy and grace. It's in Christ's holy name we ask it. Amen. Before we look at the word today, we'll sing number 136, 136. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is that coming through now? There we go. All right. Okay. As you know, in this summer, we've been doing a, a series called Standing Firm, and then in sort of standalone messages from various passages. And uh, today I want to share with you from Matthew 5, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Matthew 5 is the famous passage we call the Beatitudes. And when he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn. But we're going to look at verses 13 to 16. Jesus said these words, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do, they, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's pray and then we'll see what the Lord has for us. Gracious Father, Thank you now for this opportunity we have to consider your holy word. Thank you for the words of Jesus. Uphold us now, we pray. Guide us by your spirit. Bring into our hearts and minds your truth. For it's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen. Today we're going to learn about a salt and light revolution. A salt and light revolution. There are four things. There's going to be two regarding salt and two regarding light today. That's from our passage. So first of all, in relation to salt, the two things we'll see from salt is this. Salt preserves and salt stings. Those are the first two things. So in relation to salt preserves, if you look back at the last number of decades, you will see that we had a cultural revolution. Then we had a sexual revolution. That was followed by a digital revolution. And now you could say we have a political revolution. In the words of Charles Dickens, you remember that author, Interesting, in the words of Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Hmm. I say that because we do live in a time of technological marvels. We really do. You know, there's many, many great things. You know, I, uh, I've mentioned this before. In my opinion, the greatest invention of all time is the automatic dishwasher. <clears throat> oh, that, that's a great one. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. I mean, come on. How many of us really enjoy and look forward to washing dishes by hand? <clears throat> I don't think anybody. Not really. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the greatest ones. Yep. Another, uh, here's another good one. The, micro the microwave. Oh, that's a good one, too. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Heat things up and cook things. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. See, technological marvels. Sure. Sure. No. I mean, right now, right now, right at this moment, right now, I could call anybody in the world right now. Isn't that amazing? Right now, I can do that. Could you do that in 1875? No, nope. no. Nope. I like Little House on the Prairie as much as the next person. But you couldn't do that back then. No. Nope. Technological marvels. How many of you, ha and yet you don't have to answer, how many of you have a vehicle today that all you do is you press the button and it starts? Some of you maybe have that. Press the button. 
geez, this is like a Star Wars thing. <clears throat> you know what I mean? <clears throat> you know? I still use a regular key, but that's another story. <clears throat> yeah, all these technological things. We have industrial advancement, don't we? <clears throat> we have industrial advancement. I've told you many a time before, I used to work at a chocolate factory, not recently, years ago. And at the height of our production, okay, when things were going well, the box machines running well, everybody's having a good attitude that day, we could do 29 boxes a minute. That's how many boxes of chocolate we could do. 29 boxes a minute. <clears throat> and boy, when it's running like that, the supervisors don't want to see it mess up. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they don't. They don't. Industrial advancement. Yeah, lots of this going on. <clears throat> we have worldwide awareness, don't we? We know what's going on in Israel right now, don't we? We know what's going on all over in Ukraine right now, don't we? We know this stuff. They know what's going on over here. If I may say, hmm. That's unfortunate. And I say that because you do realize, and I think you do, you do know that worldwide, America is no longer respected. You do know that. You do know that, that worldwide, other world leaders, other nations, they, they know what's going on here. They know. On the other hand, though, okay, and some of these things are positives, but on the other hand, again, we all know we live in a time in which hatred is dividing us, isn't it? We do. We live in this kind of time. We do. We live in a time, and this, is, this has been going on for years, but it seems, in my opinion, it seems to be increasing we live in a time now which the media is lying to us. It's true. It's true. We live in a time. See, that's why I read from Franklin Roosevelt today. We live in a time in which our leaders are now redefining us. See? It's happening. It's happening. You could say we live in dangerous times because it seems that anything and anyone could spiral out of control. That's why we live in these dangerous times. That's what it seems. With all of that said, if there was ever a time for the church to stand and be counted, this is one of those times. This is one of those times. I know it can get discouraging. You see this, you see that, you see that, you see this. You hear this report, you hear that report. You see our legislatures passing laws. Okay, let's be honest. We have legislatures passing laws that make sinful behavior legal. This stuff is going on. We have candidates that are endorsing such things. This is going on. But even though this stuff is going on, <clears throat> we need to stand for truth. We need to stand for what we know is right. And I know that sometimes it can be challenging. It really can be. It can be tough to do that. 
Do you know that in the ancient world, salt was a common substance? So common that most often Roman soldiers were paid in salt. Isn't that interesting? Often they were. Do you know that's where we got our word salary? Did you know that? <clears throat> our word salary comes from the Latin term salarium, which means salt money. That's where we get salary from, salarium. We need to be salt. And what that means is we need to be salt to preserve. Which means further, we seek to slow down the decay. We seek to prevent its spread. That's what salt does. It slows the decay down. Now salt can also be a strengthening because it gives flavor. That's what he said there, right? If it loses its flavor, it gives flavor. It creates a thirst. That's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be salt. And that means we preserve the truth. We preserve the scriptures. See how that fits together? You know, I've said to you a number of times through the years, I've said we have to stand on the word of God. We have to preach the truth. This is why. Because the truth of the scriptures cleanses. What's it say in Hebrews 4? I believe it's Hebrews 4.12. Let me get over there. One second. And what's it say in Hebrews 4.12? For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and marrow, and of joints and marrow, or soul and spirit, sorry, and joints and marrow, as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what the Word of God does. That's what truth does. See, that's what truth does. Truth divides from the error. That's what truth does. That's why we stand on the word of truth. That's why we stand on the scriptures. That's we, why we proclaim what we know is right. That's why we do this. That's how we are salt. Think of this. It's been put this way, and this is what Jesus said. We are the salt of the earth, not the honey of the earth. Hmm. Interesting, isn't it? We are the salt of the earth, not the honey of the earth. Salt preserves. The second thing we're going to see today is this. Under, and the second thing we're adding salt is that salt stings. Salt stings. Now... The second thing it does, it stings, and then it heals. <clears throat> now, some of you have been various places, and you've been in the ocean. And as you know, I come from back east, so I had lots of time by the ocean. And there were numerous times as a kid growing up, you know, you get scrapes and so forth and cuts. And, and if I would go to the ocean, it's amazing. The scrape or whatever would heal up. It's true. I can testify. I can tell you that's true. It does happen. Because that's what the ocean is. It's salt water. And boy, it's salty. It's pretty salty. But what salt can do is it can kill some types of bacteria. It can do that. And then it promotes healing. That's what salt does. Jesus was using this illustration because he knew the true character of the world. 
he knew this. That's why he uses this illustration. That's why he uses it. Because he knows, he knows what the world needs. He knows. As I mentioned, every day brings new breakthroughs, doesn't it? Every day. New breakthroughs, let's say, in medicine. Okay? Every day, what do you see on the TV? You see new medicines, don't you? Every day, they're promoting a new one. Every day, there's breakthroughs in science, communications, mass production. And here's the latest. Breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah, that's the latest one. That's a big one. Have you seen some of the have you seen some of the videos of these robots they've made? Pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? The robot looks and moves just like a human or it appears anyway. Pretty amazing stuff. But here's the thing. Even though we had these advances, as I said, in medicine, science, communications, all this. Do you notice at the same time, the moral climate, the moral climate is getting darker and darker? Do you notice that? <clears throat> it is. <clears throat> There's no mistake. We live in a morally decadent society. We do. There's no mistake about this. It's slow at first, and it is. It just doesn't happen immediately. It's a slow, gradual process. You know, just like many things, even our own lives, sometimes we start here, and then a few years from now, we're over here. And we don't think about it until one day we kind of wake up. And it's like, whoa, how did I get here? And it's a slow process. It's a slow process. Back when you were growing up years ago, did we ever think that we would see what we see today? Probably not. Never thought we'd see what we're seeing today. We see that this is infecting a lot of things, isn't it? It is. It's affecting all areas of life. So what's it take to slow this down? It takes being salt. That's what it takes. Now, what does that mean? Okay? What does that mean? What it means is, if we're going to be salt, it means we will not be afraid to speak out on controversial issues. That's what it means to be salt. That what it, that's what it means. I know it's going to be a challenge. I know it will. It really will. Because if you haven't noticed, okay, not and I'm being a little bit sarcastic. If you haven't noticed, not everybody follows the Bible anymore. They don't. Not everybody follows what God has to say anymore. Many people don't now. Many people. As I've also pointed out, there used to be a time, there used to be a time when people respected the Ten Commandments. There used to be a time when people respected the church. There used to be a time when people respected God. There used to be a time when people respected the Scriptures. Might not have always followed it to a T, but at least there was a respect for it. But you can see that respect is going out the window real fast. 
All you had to do was look at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. To me, that's a mockery of God. That's a total disrespect for the things of God. We're living in a world now, just not a nation. We're living in a world now, a world now, in which the world is saying, we don't need God. That's what the world's saying. We don't need God. We don't want God. That's why it takes a lot of strength, doesn't it, to speak out on controversial issues. That's why it takes strength to do so. Being salt means we were, here it is, we're going to take a stand for truth when it's not popular. And that's a big one. Because all of us, okay, follow with me. We all like to be popular. We all like people to like us. We do. I mean, I, I like to be liked. I don't like people saying, meh, 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 meh. I, I don't like that. I know you, we don't like that. We don't like people talking behind our backs. We don't like people disliking us. But, my brothers, my sisters, my fellow believers, if they don't like the shirt I'm wearing, I don't care. If they don't like the shoes I'm wearing, I don't care. If they don't like the hat I wear, I don't care. But if they don't like me, because I've said an alternative lifestyle is wrong and an abomination of God, I will stand on that. I will stand on that. And I will say God has said it's wrong, and I'm not going to change my view on it. If I may say, if God says it's wrong to be killing babies, then guess what? It's wrong to be killing babies. <clears throat> and I will stand on that. See, those are the things, see, those are the things that are not popular, is it? They're not popular in our time. They're not popular in our society. They're not. They're not. But if God says this and this, we need to stand on what God says. Even if it's not popular. I mean, let's be honest. Okay? We look around right now and we see a lot of empty pews. And we, I know we'd all like to have these pews filled up. And by God's grace, maybe that will happen. But I want to tell you this. We're going to have these pews filled up because it's with people who want to honor the truth. That's what we're going to do. And we're not going to fill these pews just so that we can make people feel good and feel happy, okay? And we give them what they want. You see what I'm saying? We can't do that. We can't do that. I've said to you, some of you privately, I'm going to say it right now. If we wanted to have this, if, okay, if we wanted to have standing room only in this place, it'd be pretty simple. All we got to do is stand on the corner and give out $100 bills. And you know, everybody and their dog would be here. But you see, you see what I'm saying, though? That's not what we want. We don't want people here for that reason. See, that's what we don't want. 
We want them here because of the truth. We want them here because they see their need in their heart for a relationship with God. That's why they need to be here. But I'm going to tell you right now, giving money out and giving people refrigerators and giving people this and that and that and this, when they stand before God will mean nothing, absolutely nothing. Because God's going to have one question. And God's going to say, why should I allow you into my heaven? And if the person says, oh, um, well, because I went to church and, and got a new refrigerator. Guess what? Wrong answer. Wrong answer. See? That's why we need to stand on the truth. We got to stand on what we know is right. And that's what being salt it's all about. So what this further means is this. If we're going to be effective salt, you know what we need to do? Meaning we need to get out of the shaker. And we need to get into the soup. That's true, isn't it? See, if you have some soup, okay, and you've got your salt shaker here, how is that salt going to be effective in your soup? You've got to take it and put it in the soup, don't you? Just looking at the shaker not going to do anything. It looks nice. It looks pretty. But it ain't going to do anything. It's got to get in the soup to be effective. And that's what we need to do. Now, please understand, no. We don't need to be rude. We don't need to be obnoxious. We don't need to be, um, you know, every moment of every day trying to slam people with the gospel. You know what they call those? They call them Jesus freaks. And Bible thought, that's right. We don't need to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to intentionally being offensive to people. See what I'm saying? We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. But we need to mentally, emotionally, spiritually choose to stand on truth. And then as the Spirit of God presents opportunities, we then can say, in whatever situation may be, just a moment. You do know that's not right. And the person says, huh? And you say, yeah, that's not right. And let me tell you why. See, that's how we work this. We don't, as I say, we don't need to be rude. We don't need to be pushy. We don't need to be forcing ourselves upon people. We don't need to do that. But we do need to be in the soup. That we do. <clears throat> See, there are always reasons, isn't there? We can always make up reasons to stay in the shaker. We can always do that. But once we choose to get out of the shaker, we will then change the character of the world we live in. <clears throat> now granted, I want to say this. Don't get discouraged. Okay? Don't get discouraged. We'd like to be able to, let's say, go wherever tomorrow, have a conversation about the things of truth. And I'm just sort of making it up. And, and tomorrow afternoon, we'd like to see somebody make a commitment to Jesus, just like that. We'd like to be able to see that. And by God's grace, it may happen. But if it's God's plan and purpose, it doesn't happen tomorrow. Praise be to God. 
Because remember what Paul wrote in Corinthians. God uses all peoples, all believers, in various situations, in various times, in various ways. He may use you to plant a seed. He may use you to water a seed. He may use you to water a seed some more. He may use you to water a seed again. <clears throat> and then there may come a day which he will allow you to harvest a seed. That's all according to his plan. That's all according to his purpose. <clears throat> all God asks us is to continue to be faithful and continue to be salt. I said, it's easy to run back into the shaker, isn't it? <clears throat> it's easy to do that. You know what I'm saying? We see all this stuff going on. It's like, oh, man. Ooh. And we get scared. It's easy to run back. Stay in the soup. Stay with it. See, this is our whole series this summer, isn't it? Standing firm. We got to stay in the soup. Now, that's the first half. The second half today, because he talks about salt, and he also talks about light. Jesus talks about light. Going back to Matthew 5, he says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So we've just seen salt. Now we're going to go with the second part of our message in our passage, and that is light. <clears throat> Not only are we salt, but also we're light of the world. Light is a source of illumination. What does light do? Light penetrates. Light reveals. Light exposes. You ever, and you've done this 101 times, ever gone into a dark room? Can you see anything? Nope. Do you know where anything is? Nope. Not really. You have to click on the light so that it reveals, doesn't it? It exposes what is there. That's what light does. Sometimes, or I'm sorry, um, what darkness does is darkness, darkness distorts reality. That's what darkness does. It distorts reality. The light dispels the darkness so that we see things as they really are. <clears throat> Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why some people don't want to come here? Is because they know that the light of truth will expose their darkness. And they don't want to be here to do that. You know how that saying goes, sort of out of sight, out of mind? In other words, if they don't, if they don't uh, uh, um, uh, think about it, if they don't examine it, then they're okay. They're okay living in their sin. They're okay living in their abominable behaviors. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to hear about it. That's why many don't want to come to a place like this. If light is going to make a difference, it needs to shine before men. What does the scripture teach us? People will be attracted by the beauty of our life. They will. See, they see Jesus in us. And, you know, let me say this. Sometimes we get this idea that, you know, Christians are to be, you know, meek and mild and tender and gracious. Well, we are to be gracious people, that's true. We are to be uh, uh, decent people, that's true. But I also believe we are to be strong believers. We are to be courageous believers. 
Now, I'm going I'm to go on a limb here and say this. And I firmly believe that as believers, we should never be a doormat. <clears throat> I don't believe that. We want to be kind and gracious to people, yes. But there comes to a point where it's like, you know what, I know this is hard to believe. And coming from a preacher, maybe it's hard to believe. But I believe there comes a point sometimes where believers need to stand up and say no. And no more. I believe that to be true. I believe it to be true. I'm going to, tell, I'm going to go out on this limb a little bit further. Hope this limb don't break off. But I'll tell you, okay, I'm, I'm really going on a limb here. I know that none of us are perfect here today. And I, okay, and I know that none of us have perfect families here today. None of us have perfect families. We're not perfect. We don't have perfect families. There are no perfect families on this planet. But I want to tell you, when it comes to these areas, okay, now this is where it's going to be really tough. I'm going to just say a little bit, not everything, but I'll tell you this. I think sometimes there may come situations, even in our own families, where we have to say no. And we have to say no more. I really believe that to be true. And may I say the reason? is because my mental health, my emotional health, my spiritual health has to be of utmost importance to me. It has to be. It has to be. And if there are individuals, if there are peoples, you know what I'm saying, that are affecting that, I may need Notice what I'm, how I'm wording. I may need to say no. I may need to do that. I may need to do that. And I know that's tough. I know it's very, very tough. But this is, can you see what I'm saying though? This is how we also continue to be light. We be light. See, often, often we have this idea that people are attracted to Jesus, let's say, by the music we play. Nothing against music, but we think they're attracted to Jesus by that. We think they're attracted by the sermons that we, that we preach. They're attracted by the wonderful programs that we have. They're attracted by the ministries that are conducted. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said they'll be attracted by the way we live. That's what Jesus said. <clears throat> by the way we live. Do you know that, that most people, okay, and you know that I talk with various pastors and various peoples, and I try to stay up on stuff. This is true. Most people, when they go to a church, whatever church it is, most people have a list of things they're looking for. Youth programs, children's programs, men's ministries, women's ministries, the music program, all this sort of stuff. And I kid you not, it's true that on the list that most people have, almost invariably, every single time, how that church handles the Word of God is not even on the list. It's not even on the list. And to me, that's the most important thing. That ought to be the number one thing, not the last thing, and not that it's on the list at all, <clears throat> because all, see what I'm saying? The way we live is according to the scriptures. And if we're not doing that, 
then what are they going to be attracted by? <clears throat> See what I mean? And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying those things are bad and that they're wrong and that we should not be doing it. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. But as we are being light, it's our life that attracts them. They see, they see a difference in you and me. See? So they see a difference. That's what attracts them. <clears throat> see, it's, it's by our life that we show people the truth. It's by our life that we guide people to truth. You know as well as I do that there's various people, various situations and jobs and positions and so forth. And there's many, many people, isn't there? Many people that they say, well, you know, yeah, I know it's not right, but the company's good for it, so we'll just do it anyway. But you and I, we don't approach it that way. And we say, well, this isn't right. And they say, yeah, well, we're going to do it. And we say, we, how our life is, we live according to the truth. And so our life says, no, no, we're not going to do that. That's, see how the difference works? They see we're people of truth. They see, her, you know, there's various words that I use that are no longer popular. Here's one. They will see that we are people of integrity. And I bet you there's people who don't even know what that word means anymore. We're people of integrity. We're people of truth. We're people of discipline. Oh, that's a nasty word, isn't it? Discipline. It's amazing. How many of you, I know you, those of us that are older, I didn't say old, <laughs> the, those of us that are older, didn't you have your mom or your grandmother, so, or you know, didn't you have people say, I'm going to learn you? Didn't they use that expression? They didn't, they? I'm going to learn you. Well, you don't hear that anymore, do you? <laughs> We should, though. We should. We should hear it. We should hear it. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's the integrity of the word. Yeah. See, our, our Lord works through our life. Okay, he, he works through us. To guide us, or I'm sorry, he works through us to guide them to his truth. See, that's what he does. So, the light guides. Now, the second part of this is the light exposes. The second thing that the light does, okay, the light guides, we just said that. Now, the light exposes. The second thing that light does, it leads people out of the darkness into the light. The light brings illumination to the darkness. It exposes the darkness to the light. We have an enormous influence for good. Did you know that? We have an enormous influence for good. We do. We do. Every day, all of us here today, every day, every single one of us is exposed to people, aren't we? Every day. Whether it be in a store, whether it be at our workplace, wherever it is, we're always exposed to people. And I don't have to explain all this, you know, for labor to the point intensively. We all know, we're all exposed to people every day. We see people every day. And you know as well as I do, not everybody is living for truth. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. 
You can be a good citizen, but not be a believer in Jesus. Did you know that? You can live in America and not be a believer in Jesus. See? Here's a tremendous truth. As a believer, okay? As a believer today, right now, we are already salt and light. Did you know that? We're already salt and light right where we are. In other words, let me put it this way. You don't need, okay, you don't need a Bachelor of Salt degree. You don't need that. And you don't need a Doctor of Light degree. You don't need that. Because as a believer in Christ, living for the Lord, honoring Him, honoring His Word, guess what? He's already, by His salvation and His Holy Spirit, we are already salt and light. You don't need to kind of work up to it. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to kind of grasp a hold of it in that sense. You don't need to. We're already salt and light. You don't need to go to university to get it. You're already salt and light. We have everything. We do. We have everything we need right now to be salt and light. We do. Okay? If you're, if you're a believer in Christ, you already have salvation in Christ, the blood of Jesus. If you have the blood of Jesus, then guess what? You have the indwelling Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, guess what? You have the illumination of the Word of Truth. You see? It's all right there. It's all right there. <clears throat> we are salt. It's time for us to get out of the shaker. <clears throat> we are light. It's time for us to get from out under the basket. That's what he says here, right? Don't put your light on a basket, see? <clears throat> there are some Christians, there are some Christians, they're proud of the fact that they're secret service Christians. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Amen, see? <clears throat> we don't need to be secret service Christians. Oh, I know, they look kind of cool. They wear the glasses. They have the little earpiece and, you know. But no, 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 no. Now, keep in mind, though, see, see the two extremes? What did we just say a little while ago? Well, we don't need to be rude and obnoxious, you know, and offending people. We don't need to do that. But we don't need to be over here either. And that, you know, people are like, they have no clue who we are, what we are. No, 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 no. Don't go to that extreme either. As, okay, as the Lord provides opportunity, as he opens doors, that's when, you know, that's when we, we and, and why did I explain our current national situation? Why did I do that? Because we need to understand the culture we live in. And that then, you see, is what our mandate is from the Lord God. This is the culture we live in. He wants us to be salt and light. He wants us to bring light to the darkness. He wants us to do this. And I said, this is not going to be easy. Not going to be easy. <clears throat> you know, because our, our culture... Our culture is really resisting this. It's resisting it. I mean, again, I make reference to it. It, it, it. You want an example of the nonsense? Here's an example of the nonsense. 
there was a surfer in the Olympics. And the surfer had a picture of Jesus on his board. And as far as I understand it, the Olympic committee said, no, 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 no. You can't compete with that picture on there. You've got to take it off. And then, he, well, why? Now, here's, here's a sample of the nonsense. He says, well, why? And they said, oh, well, because we need to be inclusive. It's like, what are you saying? Oh, yeah, you want to include all this, but you can't include this? See, to me, you know what that is? That is an outright mocking of God. See what I'm saying? That's what that says. It says we want to include all of this. Oh, but because you believe in God, we're not going to include that. See the nonsense? That's the nonsense, my brothers and sisters. That's the nonsense. And that's why God wants us to expose it to the light. <clears throat> And that's why I continue to say to you, it's going to be challenging. And it's going to be tough. It will be. It will be. Now, as we wrap this up, we may not be able to do everything. But I want to tell you, God didn't call us to do everything. But we can do something. Okay. We might not be able to, excuse me, reach everybody, but we can reach somebody. That's all it is. That's all it is. So many people, <clears throat> so many people remain in darkness because they don't think they have any other option. That's true. Some people do that. <clears throat> The world may not want salt and light, but we know they desperately need it. They desperately need it. <clears throat> so, let us not be disappointed by the world's condition in that sense. I mean, this is nothing new. We don't need to be disappointed by it, but let us have a new vision, a new vision today of the difference that we can make, that we can make of being salt and light. And that is the salt and light revolution today. All right, let's pray. We'll sing our last song. Gracious Father, we praise you for your holy word today. We praise you for your holy scriptures. We praise you for your holy, holy spirit. We praise you for your holy son. That in Christ Jesus we have absolute complete atonement for sin. We have complete salvation in Jesus. And we have your holy spirit to guide us in your holy truth. Father, you know the condition of our world. You know the, 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 uh, the darkness that is in our world. And Lord, you know the direction of our world. I pray today you'll give us strength. You'll give us courage. You'll give us boldness to go against the flow of the world today. May we in this church body as believers and as a church congregation, may we continue, may we continue our commitment to stand on the truth. Regardless of who says what, regardless of who does what, we will stand on the truth. Strengthen our hearts to be able to do so. I pray for my brothers and sisters as they go into this week, Lord. You'll give them the courage they'll need to stand firm and to be salt and light. And Lord, as you open doors, they will plant seeds, they'll water seeds, and you may give an increase. Strengthen us, Lord, I pray. May we pray.
pray that you will bring to us who you have for us and we'll be faithful to disciple and to train and to train in the truth. We pray these things by the name and power and grace of Christ Jesus. Amen. Number 413. 413. Gracious Father, God of all grace, mercy, and peace, we praise you this day to worship you, to praise you, to be in this place as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We praise you for your holy word, guided by your Holy Spirit today. Father, may you have strengthened our hearts today, and we know that we go in the victory of Christ Jesus and his power. None of this depends on us, but all in his grace and power. Father, we thank you for our worship today. We thank you for our fellowship luncheon, which is before us. Thank you for all those that have helped to prepare and to bring the food in. May you bless this food to our bodies, nourish us, nourish our spirits as well with our wonderful fellowship today. We give the praise and thanks and honor and glory. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior.